How can you make sure your quality is top notch when you work in a CAD tool? Coming up. Hello and welcome back to the Freelancers. Hope you're doing well. Summer is definitely here. We have 34 degrees this week in Belgium. So I'm recording this in the evening when it's a bit more uh, chill. I hope you find a nice place in the shade to watch this. Uh, today we talk about quality assurance. Quality is paramount for freelance translators. It is the number one thing that distinguishes you from your competition, from competing with, you know, M MT, AI, uh, going forward, forward into the future, your quality just needs to be impeccable. If you are working with any cut tool, it will have a quality assurance tool integrated. And today I want to talk about the one I'm using on a daily basis, my favorite tool, MemoQ. Uh, I think it has a great quality assurance tool and it is also the sponsor of today's video. They are always supporting the channel, so thank you very much for that. Uh, if you're in the market for a, a freelance translated tool, make sure to click the first link in the description that leads you directly to their landing page. So why is quality assurance important? So when you work with a cut tool, uh, you have a very long text, let's say, with thousands of segments uh, and then in the end you have to kind of review it again right you go through it and you try your best to spot any kind of uh, inconsistencies errors etc but sometimes things slip through right and instead i mean you can still export it into a word and do a spell check for example there are also spell checks within the cat tool that's another quality assurance step but the quality assurance tool on its own is a great way to make sure that nothing slipped through. Uh, it's a it's a QA check that you can that you can run after your translation, and then what it gives you is it gives you warnings and errors. The warnings often you can ignore uh, or just check them and then ignore them. Uh, the errors most likely you have to change something, right? So let's say for example the the source segment has uh, the same uh, so it's the same source text in two different segments and your translation is different. Let's say once you translated sale as a sale and once you translated sale as promotion in the language, uh, then it will tell you, hey, is this on purpose? Because it can be, right? There are stylistic choices that definitely uh, validate having two different translations for the same source text. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but you still need to check it and if it's okay you ignore it otherwise you change uh, or let's say there is a, a punctuation in the source that's different from the one in the target right the source has a full stop you don't add a full stop the source has a full stop you add a comma because you have to merge two segments and it's actually continuing all of these things you can ignore but let's say you actually type the comma instead of a full stop then it's very easy to overlook in the in the revision stage and then you can go ahead and change it these are all warnings, but then you also have actual errors. When an error happened in the translation, and then you can also go check it and make sure that everything is consistent, correct. Uh, so I want to show you on screen how it works in MemoQ, so you get kind of an overview of the QA feature that this tool has. All right, you should see my MemoQ view map. Ma no, I almost said uh, now. Um, so, sorry, mix of languages in the head. I have a random text from English to German in here. Uh, I finished the translation and uh, now I can do the quality assurance. So that you do at the end of your translation when you're completely done, you, you confirmed all the segments. Uh, then the quality assurance is here under the review tab. You can see the big thumbs up, that's quality insurance. If you hover over it, you see what it says. Run the automatic quality checks or display a special view of all errors and warnings that allows you to fix problems. That's exactly what we want to do. Uh, I added a few problems in the text, so it actually spits something out because such as short text usually would not spit anything out. The QA is really powerful in a long, long text. I still do it with every project, but uh, here nothing would have come up, I think. So I added a few uh, little things here and there. So you can go uh, to quality assurance, run QA, then another window opens. Here you don't need to change anything. It's always the active document that you want to check. Uh, unless you really want to only check from the cursor position or the whole project, but I never change anything here. I just click OK and then the QA check gets done. As you can see, five things have been found. Here you see the document. Obviously, we are in this one. Uh, you see the row. So in row three, actually, he found two things. It, he, she, it, I don't know. Uh, it gives you an error code. It's not really useful, the error code. Sometimes it's useful when you can sort by error code. Then you see like these two are the same, so they are uh, on the same spot but I, I prefer to sort by row so it's in chronological order and then the description of the problem now i had 
twice the segment German text for beginners in the source and once I translated it as Deutsche Texte and once as Deutsch Texte. So I wanted to, uh, because this could easily happen in a, in a big job, right? And then the QA check would tell you, hey, be careful, uh, this is actually the same uh, error code. Uh, it's the same source, these two exactly the same source, but you translated it differently. Is this on purpose? It can be on purpose, of course, but here I would then adjust it. Here you can directly change it uh, to Deutsch text, uh, and then both are uh, the same. And then the first one is an extra space at the end of the segment, so there is a trailing space at the end that should be deleted. Uh, that's a very popular error that happens many times, so then you can just delete it. It's done. Um, and then in row three, there are two problems actually, because uh, the source says, um, as well as meeting the needs of the more advanced B1 level students, and I added uh, Lernen auf der Stufe B1 und B2, so I added B and B2, and that's actually wrong. Uh, but the quality assurance is actually not sure what happened here. So they say, first of all, that the number two is, is extra in the target, which is true because it's actually not the A2, it's the B2 that's extra. And then it also says A2 and B2, something is weird, right? It, it doesn't really understand, but it definitely tells you, hey, you need to check and you would see, oh, I made a mistake here, right? So it just gives you a warning uh, that you definitely need to look out for something. Uh, how you can see in the editor view what's wrong is by this little lightning bolt here. Uh, so warning, one of one not ignored, double click to view the list of warnings. So if you click on this, uh, it shows you what's actually wrong in consistent translation for German text for beginners. Uh, then you can change, click ignore if you want to ignore it or actually change it. Uh, there is a new tab open now, Resolve Errors and Warnings, so they're all here. Um, so this would be then of, of der Stufe B1. All right, now everything is corrected and then you can run the quality uh, again if you want and then they will disappear. Very nice. That is how I use the quality assurance in MemoQ every day, basically. It's, it has become part of my daily workflow after every translation around the QA check. Most of the time, by now, nothing comes up, but then once in a while something comes up that I think, oh my god, if, if I send this to the client, that would be so embarrassing. So it's a great little tool that, that saves you potentially uh, big consequences with a, a few simple clicks. Um, I think it's still overlooked, people don't really use it enough. Um, I can definitely recommend. As I said, if you uh, are interested in the MemoQ Translator Pro version for freelance translators, make sure to click the first link in the description that leads you to the landing page. And I see you next Monday with the last video of the season. I'm going to do a seasonal recap, uh, a roundup of the year, uh, look back a bit on what happened on the channel, and then summer break, get ready for the next season. What is it, season six or something ridiculous? Crazy. Anyways, thanks for being here. I see you next Monday. Bye-bye.